we're starting with the installation of our Mr. Wetwall panels. So these are the corner profiles, they're called W profiles and they fit in the corners just like that. So then what you do is you stick your wet wall panels just into those two slots and make sure you put a lot of sealant in between. That way you'll get a super watertight bond around those seams. Um, all this stuff's really easy to cut. It's just plastic, so just cut it with a miter saw. Um, same for the wet wall panels, we'll just be cutting them with a the circular saw. are cutting our awesome bathroom wall panels. So, thanks Yele. Now you know what I feel like all the time. Today we are installing our awesome wet wall panels in our bathroom. Um, we'll take you along. These things look awesome. We've tried one already, so here we go. So your wet wall panels always come in a cardboard box pretty much. Um, that's just to keep them away from sunlight um, because you don't want the wet wall panel to start discoloring. So ours have been in this for a very long time. Uh, we'll take one out, have a look at it. So these are our panels. They are Carrara iced marble, uh, matte look. So. They have these in two different sizes. They have 2400 by 1 meter and they have 2000 by 1 meter. So we got the 2000 because our bathroom is actually 199 high. If you would have a wall that's longer than a meter, these things come with like a tongue and a groove. Um, so you can pretty much just notch them right into each other. Um, but yeah, other than that, because of the way these things are constructed with this hollow profile, they're super sturdy, very rigid. Just to give you a bit of perspective of how this all works, this is one of the corner trims. Here is an off cut for demonstration purposes, so pretty much you notch, that goes right in there as you can see. And you can, that makes it really easy to completely waterproof if you fill this seam with a bit of uh, silicon. Um, Mr. Wetwall also sells sealant and adhesive, so we've got a couple tubes of those and that's what we'll be using to... The sheet is cut to you with, so, um, little tip, cut with, if you're cutting this with a circular saw, um, cut with the non-decorated, so the non-designed side up, because that side will chip. Whereas the bottom side looks very clean. We've got a bit of a problem. So when we first tried to fit our first sheet, um, well, our inside height here is 195. Our inside, height, our inside height in the bathroom is 199. Um, so we, we cut it to 199 hoping we could kind of like maneuver it into place, but um, yeah, it wasn't possible. So, what we're going to end up doing is um, adding a layer of tiles around the bottom, all the way around, about 50 mil. That way we can bring our panels inside, tilt them up so they can stand up inside. So they're 194 now, so they can pretty much stand up in inside here and we pr pretty much just stand them up and bring them through the door and set them into place where they're supposed to go which means they have a gap like that at the top at the moment so once we get the tiles put in at the bottom we can glue the panels in over them and we should be good so starting to get there we cut our panel just about small enough to be able to stand it up inside here and then we can just kind of move it around as we need to, slowly, or else he yeah, gets mad when I doink it on the ceiling. Which he's done before. I never do. And then it just fits inside the shower door.
we're gonna have a uh, about 50 mil gap um, under the panels which we're gonna fill with tiles so we're pretty much making a shower base um, out of tiles and waterproofing um, so what I've done I've already cut the tiles down to the strip and now I've just put them in there and marked where I need to cut them a uh, little tip for cutting small pieces of tile um, to make sure you don't crack them um, so what I like to do is uh, take the grinder so you take the edge of the disc and you just go skim along the top right along the edge of this line and then you start just going back and forth and just kind of wearing away material instead of going starting here and working your way completely through the whole thing because once you get to about here it'll just crack and then you don't know what direction the crack is going to propagate in. We are putting in our wet room panels from Mr. Wet Wall, finally! And yes, it's almost the middle of the night, but we've got to get this done, so... Hey, what did you do before? Don't ask. Look I'm at him. so sore. <laughs> um, so, we're putting in... Um, so we're putting this eye seal, um, which is pretty much the sealant, into the uh, trim sides um, just to make sure that it's sealed. Mainly I'm going to do the inside lip of this, not, and I'll put a bit on this as well. Um, yeah, and then we'll <laughs> stick the panel in there and hopefully it'll be sealed. And then we'll glue the panel to the back obviously. has done a beautiful job decorating the wall with um, dots. <laughs> dots. Who did that, you know? I don't know. That? What happened? That's weird. So anyway, we used a ton of the uh, eye stick stuff and hopefully it'll stick. Let's stick it on there. Wall number two is ready for gluing. So there's glue everywhere, trims are ready. There's the eye seal inside the trim. Some more inside this trim. And let's hope that I thought of all of the wiring and plumbing here because after this, well, you won't be able to get to it. And looks like somebody's had too long of a day changing out wheel studs. <laughs> I've got to admit though, I'm pretty pooped too. And my hand is like shaking. It hurts so bad. Because all day using the, the ratchet, and now I have to squeeze for the, the gun. And this stuff is so thick. Oh well. No pain, no gain. That's what they say, hey? Alright, Yele, what are we working on? You tell them. <laughs> you tell them. <laughs> Thanks. This will be part of the outtakes. <laughs> Alright, Yele is working on our silicon. So we're just putting silicon along our shower pan gaps. So we're pretty much making a shower pan out of tiles and waterproofing behind it. Uh, the silicon we're using is this Ardex sanitary silicon. It's called Ardex SE. And we've got the same color. So we got have the, they have a coal color palette that matches their um, grout. So we have charred ash grout. And so we got the charred ash silicon. Now, we were originally going to use um, some sort of like grout or something like that just to have it be a bit hard wearing, um, but Ardix actually recommended for us to use this silicon because it's a... <laughs> Go 
job, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's actually very hard wearing silicon. They use it for pools and all kinds of other installations where it's outdoors and you know gets used a lot. So we uh, were easily talked into it, and we got the charred ash for the gaps between the tiles and the gap between the floor and the wall tiles. And then we have a white silicon, same one, the SE, um, to go between the wet wall panels and the floor tiles. So we'll make sure that's all siliconed and waterproofed. And after that, we should be good to go. And then yeah, they can have a shower. Yeah, right. <laughs> need to fill up water first. I finished the grey bits and I'm now making breakfast. Banana pancakes. So Patrick had to take over. She doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> he's doing the white seam in between the panels and the tiles. And he's complaining non-stop. <laughs> Look at that. Who made this gap so big, Patrick? You did. <laughs> yeah, right. I was sleeping. <laughs> your fault. Always. Always your fault. Get used to it. <laughs> We're gonna drill a hole in the wall. It's for the vent of our toilet. Our Ogo is sitting right here at the moment. Oh my god. You sure I'm it's the right spot? I'm a bit scared. I don't know. Is there like a wooden baton or something behind it or a wire? Mm, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm a bit scared. Go, Patrick! I'm a bit scared yet, eh? You can do it! I guess there's already a hole now, so it doesn't matter. Make it bigger, right? Patrick's taking that drill out because we really don't want to destroy the vapor barrier that's behind there. Oh my goodness, Patrick! <laughs> Patrick left the power cord and the vent ducting thing behind the wall. Now he has to try to find it. He found the power cord, which is found thing is I duct taped it to the vapor barrier which but what? <laughs> it wasn't too smart. <laughs> Do you remember what height you did? It's right here, yeah, it's about right there. <laughs> yeah, good luck, Patrick. Thank you. And the hole was in the right position, it actually fits. And Patrick connected the cable and the outlet already and glued it all together. So it's venting out all the way behind the wall in here and then down through the floor. And we'll have to put like a mozzy net on it, right? Whose job's that gonna be? Probably mine. <laughs> it's been on her to do list for a while. We yeah. are working on our bathroom again, and we already built a door which we didn't record. It was a bit like at night and it was dark, and we just wanted to get it done. But I'll quickly show you how we've done it. So, on the outside, we cladded it with um, pine lining like the rest of the build, so it matches the rest. And then we were using the same hinges we use for our doors our entrance door and hatches I'm um, just a bit narrower this 75s I think or 50s and we um, if you're wondering why they're sticking out this much it's because of the pine lining so there will be another board here and then here obviously and then you will only see the round bit and from the inside you can see we cut 70 by 35 um, battens in half and used it to frame the door and this is how far we got. So now we are going to work on this wet wall panel and the door and all the trims that come with it so we can hopefully have a shower in here very soon and test out our rain shower head. So the idea is we want the door to close on a trim so like on a surface that we can put a pretty much a seal onto. So we started with these Mr. Wet Wall trims. They look like that. And we cut one down to look like this. And uh, then we cut one of the panels to this tiny little slice pretty much and had to cut it twice because 
We had to make sure we get the actual, there's only one groove in there. Like one, one support. So in the, in the middle, it's actually in the middle. Um, yeah, so that was a bit of a challenge. And so what we'll do is we'll stick these two together, like so. And then this goes in that gap and then it'll look like that once it's all glued in and done. And then we'll add our seal to this surface here. And then when the door closes, it should be sealed from any like water splashing out into like the timber area. Should be, right? It'll work. We cut that panel to size and now we're gonna glue it on um, after all these modifications with the trims we had to do. is a bit tricky because we have to bend this trim because it's 90 degrees and our bend is not 90 degrees yep. and also we had to modify our panel so it can actually it's hard to see here so it bends here again and this is straight like the door you'll see when we do it is where we cut open the bag just to bend it a bit. Um, you can do that once but don't bend it back and forth because we've done a test piece and then it starts cracking the actual design on the top. are building a bathroom vanity so there's going to be a tap here a waterfall tap and a sink here and because Patrick wants the bowl to be inserted a bit more he actually used an empty beer keg <laughs> German beer from Aldi um, as round. a stencil and now he's gonna cut it out all right, we have some expired um, adhesive, um, and it's actually a bit thicker, which means it gives it a bit more initial grab, which um, we've just put on the corners that need to pretty much get a grab um, or hold. And now we're using some of the normal stuff, which you'll see the difference in like how thick it is when I put it on. So this is the stuff that we just got recently, and it's much less. Darker as well, Patrick. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we did leave mountain sun. <laughs> All right, here we go. No uh -oh. turning back now, Yele. Hope you liked it. Not sure, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Too late now. making our hole for our drain in our stainless bowl. Um, so this bowl we actually got from Ikea and we're gonna convert it into a sink because well, um, yeah, it's a cool look actually with like a black drain and everything inside it. So I'm pretty much just gonna drill a 40 mil hole in here to get the drain in and uh, show you how it goes. And another reason why we got it is small um, little sinks are so expensive yeah. and mostly made of, out of ceramic yeah and we didn't like the looks like they were all ceramic they had that like old rustical look whereas we wanted to go for something a bit different so yeah. we, figured, yeah, why? <laughs> we figured we'll give this a try and see if it works and if not we can always change it to something else
got a hole in our bowl. <laughs> and for anyone that knows how much of a pain it is to work with stainless, even though this is thin sheet, um, the failed hole saws, they make quick work out of it. Like, you, I mean, you obviously don't want to go too fast, but yeah, if you had this in a drill press, I reckon you could get through this in absolutely no time. But yeah, even with the hand drill, works Cheap fine. hand drill. Works fine. Once we had the hole in the bowl, we used a drain from just from Bunnings, a pop-up one. Um, installed that, and now this is our little sink. We glued it on. It's not all sealed off yet. Installed our little waterfall faucet, and we haven't connected the grey water yet, so we're not using the sink unless we have a shower in here, and it doesn't matter because everything's wet anyways. <laughs> We are installing our heated towel rail from Cold Buster and there's three mounting screws which we'll use along with uh, some of that glue from Ardex, the CA20P. Um, we were thinking about mounting this vertically but I don't think the towels would stick uh, or stay on there especially when we're driving so we're going to mount it horizontally but pretty high up. So we'll mount it over about right there over our hatch into our overhang for storage. So the first step is we have to drill a hole to stick the wire through. We'll stick that through here the wall and then I've already um, put a little opening in the back there on the back side of this wall um, to pull the wire back out so I can wire this all up to a uh, switch. The reason why we want to put it up there is we honestly couldn't find a perfect spot for it. Under the window it was in the way of the toilet, behind here it was in the way of the toilet and our future sink. Here's the shower, up there it would block the window when towels are on and it would be dark in here. So this was the last option and yeah, that's why we chose it. There's no going back now once I drill this hole so you better don't think do it. twice. We don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> heated towel rail will come with these alu blocks that you can screw into a wall. Now because this is plastic and I don't want to rip that out of the wall, we'll actually glue this whole surface as well with our Ardex CA20P. Uh, so I'll just coat that on there and then I've already pre-drilled the holes in the correct spot up there. So I'll attach that there and do the same thing for the other side. There's only one screw on the other side. <laughs> The other side has a <laughs> the other side has a similar alu block, um, but it has only one screw because the other side is where the um, power cable goes through. So put the power cable through there, and I've already pre-drilled that hole there as well. But I'll glue that one on as well. Installing our Luke's 3046 LED ribbon from Hefle. Um, it comes with like a coating around it, if you can see that, um, around the LED strip. And pretty much, it's if you use the right plugs and the right ends, um, it's IP54 water and dust rated, uh, maybe 44. I don't exactly quote me on that. Anyway, it's a bit higher than normal. Um, now to get this into here, you pretty much have to slide it onto this like tab that's on the end of the lead. So if you slide it on the tab, you'll notice that it gets to, you get it to about right there. 
and then it jams. So you can't actually get the contacts under there. So what you actually have to do is, it actually has a stop there. The place where you, you'd normally cut, so if you were to cut this end off, you actually have to cut off the silicon around the outside and just have the strip exposed. Now you have to be a bit careful with this because you can't just take a scissor and go snip or else the contacts will be off. So I've been using our little um, carpet knife just to go around, just slightly get a nice cut on there. Same that side, back side. And that side and then you can pretty much start just peeling it back there you go so you want to have the contact exposed right where the cut line is and the rest have to keep the silicon on there this piece you can chuck in the bin Patrick in the bin that's right Yele and what we'll do now is pretty much now you can slide this in here all the way down to where you can get the um, so when the silicon bottoms out the terminals are actually under where they get clamped so we'll put this one on here where it's gonna go now once it's on there you wanna pretty much make sure that your contacts are gonna clamp down or the contacts on the oh, the connector clamp down onto the wires then you pull your little silicon um, waterproofing thing over. Alright, you just kind of, without pulling off the sticky tape on the back, lay it in there. And because we're doing 45 degrees, um, I'd rather cut it a bit short rather than too long, because then you can't get the 45s up to each other. So I'll cut that off right there, which is only about two LED like lights short of where it's supposed to end so get that done then we'll peel off the backing and stick it down then you just clip in your diffuser We have Bluetooth connect meshes on all of our Luke's lighting, but the only one we wanted to have a switch on is the bathroom lights because, you know, if you have to get up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom and you have to find the Bluetooth controller that's laying around somewhere or get out your phone or even if you have wall mounted ones, um, you still have to go and find them. So we wanted to have an actual physical wired in switch which is always possible. Um, you don't actually have to get the Bluetooth connect meshes, you can just get the normal wired meshes as well um, and put everything on hardwired switches. Um, it's all available in the Luke's catalog. Um, we're just getting this one because the connect mesh uh, controllers have one port for a switch on each connect mesh. So for the one that we're using the bathroom wiring for, we're gonna put this one on and what you do is pretty much you get this with the housing. So you stick the, this is like a LED, or not, uh, not an LED, uh, infrared, like near sensor. So you don't actually have to touch it. Anything that moves nearby will trigger it. Um, and you, it just comes as a cylinder. You stick into this. You mount the plate for the mount. And you stick that in there. And before you do that, you add your wire. To connect these together, um, when you insert your cylinder, make sure you've got it lined up correctly. There is a top part of it, and it goes into the closed off end, so you can slide this onto the mount. And then you get your end of the wiring plug, and you stick it in on this side. And that just clips in. That's the good thing about the Luke system, it's all plug and play, you don't have to do any soldering, you don't have to do any other wiring, it's just plug it in and run your wires, that's all you do. So now that the wire is installed, we'll just clip this in here. Clip 
this on there. And you hear it click once it gets to the back, bottoms out. And that's in. Now we'll put our cladding here around this. And then whenever you go like that, it'll just trigger the, uh, so you go like that, it'll trigger the lights inside. So this is your connect mesh, just so you see it when it's not installed. On the bottom you have your six ports that you attach your lighting to. So one port is for single color, so single light. Uh, two ports is for, so you'd attach two ports to do multi-white and three ports to do RGB. Uh, and if you flip it to this side, this is where your switching port is. So that's where we'll be connecting our one wired switch. What's happening here? I'm gonna test the shower and it's the first time we're actually testing it and it's not quite ready so we had to do some taping off <laughs> so the windows taped off even the shower mixer which is right there and the little hatch and we are a wonderful light <laughs> we're using a solar light because we don't have the light installed yet so how it goes. Yeah, this first is time. Test our first shower. She's gonna get naked now. <laughs> and we even had to plumb up the faucet because otherwise there would just be water coming out of those lines. That's right. Yeah. So if there's water anywhere later, yeah, that it's your fault. Yeah, right. <laughs> You'll have to stand here and keep this door shut, right? Because it doesn't have a locking mechanism yet. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you can drink beer, but you have to be standing here pushing it in. So no, I'll put the beer keg in the door. <laughs> so it's sealed. Alright. Alright, let's go. Go, take off your clothes. <laughs> how was it? That was awesome. How so do you like, how do you like our new rain shower? It's, it's so unreal. <laughs> it's better than the shower at home. <laughs> Oh, the, ca the camera's fogging up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I how had a hot, hot shower. You, how hot did you shower yet? Eh? <laughs> Not that hot, come on, it was barely over half. Uh. Like, come on. We you, both had a shower. How did you like it, Patrick? Loved it. I, I'm not exaggerating. I didn't think it was going to be that awesome. <laughs> I know, I was the same. I think we were not used to it as well. Because we've had outdoor showers. Yeah, I think we've just gotten used to showering wherever. And like I've always wanted to have a rain shower as like a personal shower. Yeah, me too. Never had one. Same. Um, and now that we have one, it's just, just completely blows your mind. It's crazy. <laughs> it's amazing. And everyone keeps saying it uses too much water. And now we did a little check. Here we go, that's our temporary water gauge. And this sender thing was literally here. That would be three quarters and our tank is about 200 liters. So from here to here would be 50, but it was literally here. So we maybe we used like 10 or 20 liters. For both of us. For both of us, yeah. Which is insane, that's like not much yeah. for having a, not long, but having a decent hot shower. Yeah, and we both have long hair, so we both have to wash our hair. True. Yeah, all in all, thumbs up. We absolutely love it. Um, we we can't link the products below because the shower head's from China. <laughs> but um, get yourself a rain shower head. It's awesome. It can't even fall down like the handheld ones. It's permanently mounted, and it's the feeling standing underneath is, is insane. We love it. Yep. Like I said, I I, I, I can't keep, I, I have to say it again, I am blown away by this rain shower head. Like I've always wanted to have one and now I finally had a shower, an hour shower. Like I've had it in a hotel and it's been nice, but hour shower and that's what I get to shower in now for who knows how long. So are you going to have a shower every day or every second day instead of every week? Mm. Yeah. We might be able to negotiate on that. <laughs> Definitely no more outdoor showers though. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, guys, this is it for this week's video. We're getting there. We um, cut the trims for this cut already, so you get an idea of what it's gonna look like. That one's obviously not done, and that will get a door as well as this. You will be a tiny door, so all the stuff in there, like toilet paper, will stay dry. But other than that, it's pretty much done. We don't have a lock yet, um, which is somewhere on the way, but everything takes ages to get to WA. But we're still so stoked. We're so happy with the rain shower head. And um, yeah, I'll give it a try again later. And have a nice shower. Bad the sun.